Hey guys, what's going on? It's McDonald Bullion with another episode about silver. Guys, in this video, I'm going to be talking about junk silver, which is also known as constitutional silver. Before we start, make sure you hit the subscribe button and like this video. The notification bell means you won't miss another episode. So junk silver is an expression mostly used by silver stackers or coin collectors. It describes silver coins that have a limited value. They'll often have 90% of silver content or less. Junk silver coins are generally bought for investment purposes. They can be bought very cheaply and can be sold on whenever the price of silver rises for a small profit. Junk silver is determined by its condition and the content of its silver. If it contains 90% or higher silver content, it becomes much more desirable. Mint and coins that are in perfect condition are worth much more than junk silver for obvious reasons. The term junk silver came from the US and has become a common phrase used worldwide with stackers. I call it junk silver because most people will understand what I'm talking about, but it's commonly used in places like the US and Canada. The US has a large quantity of 90% junk silver, such as Barber Dimes, Mercury Dime, Roosevelt Dime, Barber Quarter, Standard Liberty Quarter, Washington Quarter, Barber Half Dollar, Walking Liberty Half Dollar, Franklin Half Dollar, Kendi Half Dollar, Trade Dollar and the Peace Dollar. That's because the US used silver in its coins until 1965. The requirement for US coins was to have 90% of silver. So if you're unsure whether you have silver junk coins, the easiest way is to check the year. You can also check the edge of the coin and see if there's a solid silver strip, that's good news. If you see a slight redness to it, that's copper known as clad. And if there's faint traces, then it may be one of the 40%ers. The 40%ers are silver as well. They include the Kennedy half dollars post 65 to 70 and the Eisenhower silver dart dollar from 1971 to 1978. In the UK they use sterling silver from 1592 up until 1919. Sterling silver is 92.5% silver content. The coins include crown, half crown, florin, shillings, sixpence and threepence. They all contain silver. From 1920 to 1947 the silver content was lowered and then struck in 0.500 pure silver. The rest included copper. From 1947 onwards the UK minted its coins in copper nickel. In Canada from pre-1919 they used sterling silver in their silver quarters. From 1919 onwards Canada used 80% pure silver content for their coins. Coins included are the Canadian dime and the silver quarter where they debased after 68 to 0.500 silver and then switched to nickel. Australia has a term called post silver which was 50% silver coins from 1946 to 1964. Other coins like the Swiss Franken coins use 83.5% silver from 1874 to 1967. These are just a few examples to show you. Junk silver can be easily acquired, it can be obtained by your local LCS or online bullion dealers or selling auction sites such as eBay. I collect junk silver because I like having lots of different coins from around the world and if silver increases it determines the value in the future as well. Some of the coins I have here are over 200 years old. I'll show you some more coins that I've got in my collection, in my junk silver collection to show you, just for example purposes, and see what coins are like from the rest of the world. So, as I mentioned, the Canadian dime I have here in the little white slip, the white flip, sorry. I've got some American coins here, which are all 90% dimes. And uh, I've got some other coins to show you as well. And I'll bring out all the rest of the other coins that I had previously at the end of the video. But I've got a half crown there, which has a blue tint into it, which is not in great condition. But I've got half crowns and other coins to show you as well. But this is the Canadian one, the Canadian dime, which is a junk silver coin. As an example to show you, I got this from one of the silver stackers in this community. I think it's a 64 one, which has got quite nice tone. And he sent this in and I'd done a pretty bad job taking it out of the... Uh, out of the envelope but um, I'll replace that very soon hopefully and I've got some lucky sixpences here I can't remember the reason why they're called lucky sixpences but um, in the UK it's quite common to give someone at their wedding uh, silver as good luck and uh, the sixpence silver lucky pence is uh, one of the examples that you can do I don't know anyone that's done it recently but uh, you can do that and it's got George V on the back of there as well. But these are some of the new examples I've got to add to the junk silver collection, which I wanted to show you. I've got four sixpences here. I might use a few for a giveaway in the future, but I have a giveaway already, so I'm not going to be doing that just yet. But this half crown here is a pretty poor example, but this is a 40s one, which has some blue tint in and is pretty dirty. To the rear of it, it has some, uh, it has some quite corroded uh, George there as well. But um, I wanted to bring them out and show you. 
I want to shout out some of the other collections I have, which includes the Irish one, the Irish coin and the Swedish coin. And uh, I'll bring out everything so you can have a little look at some of the junk silver I've got to show you. But uh, guys, I hope you found uh, some of the information I, I've provided you uh, interesting and maybe you've learned something. But um, I'm going to wrap that up. You leave me a comment in the uh, comment description of what you'd like to see, any other videos and stuff. And um, yeah, keep stacking guys. Make sure you um, subscribe because I'll be releasing more videos and I'll hopefully have some exciting things coming along the way as well. So um, thank you very much for watching guys. All the best. I will see you in the next video. Take care.